Hello everyone, we want to welcome you to our webinar today. We're excited to have Taylor Labs with us from Anovia Consulting. And Taylor will be presenting on Get More Out of Your FS Logic Virtual Profile in O365 Containers. And before I pass it over to Taylor to cover on this topic, I would like to remind you that this webinar is being recorded as well as all of our other webinars and it will be posted to our on-demand webinar library for you to review and share with anyone. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to type those into the questions box and we will get them answered at the end of our session. So now I'm going to pass it on over to Taylor to kick off our presentation. Hey, thanks, Angie. Um, welcome everyone who took the time out of their day to come and learn a little bit about Office 365 FS Logic Virtual Profile and Office 365 Containers. Um, just a little bit about myself. My name again is Taylor Labs. I'm a technology consultant here at Inovia Consulting. My job here at Inovia is based mostly around infrastructure. We are the team that handles in everything in and around NAV from the Azure infrastructure to your local PCs. Um, we are, we're kind of the guys that, that make it all the glue together. Some little bit of background on myself. I, I come from the managed service world. I was an IT administrator for about 10 years before joining Inovia last year. Yeah, my journey took me from college through that and started with client workstations, worked all, my, worked all the way up to data center infrastructure. So have had a little taste of everything in the IT world. So what we're going to talk about today is an application called FS Logic. Why, why FS Logic? With the rising trends of today, especially with COVID and other things that are going around, Companies are trying to migrate their businesses to a platform instead of it being in a sole building to an at-home or a cloud-based infrastructure. One of the struggles that we've seen recently with some of our clients is with, in conjunction with Office 365, with mostly Teams, SharePoint, and OneDrive for Business, is that how we, how we are expecting our applications to work aren't quite the same from being all on site to being in that virtual cloud. One of the biggest issues that we've seen is with OneDrive. Now, most of us have been in there and we would notice this is pretty familiar. This right here is your OneDrive in your SharePoint from your Office 365 tenant sunk down to your local workstation. Well, this works great with independent client workstations, but since the mass move has gone to that cloud-based or home infrastructure, more and more companies are using terminal servers or remote desktop servers to gain easier access, better maintenance, and better performance in their environment. One of the hardships that we have found is that when you take those, take those remote desktops, profiles can get very big very clunky and actually slow down or re reduce performance considerably over time. In the last five or six years, there's been a lot of push and a lot of movement on virtualizing those, pro those profiles, our Windows profiles, and being able to traverse them from not just one server, but multiple servers. Microsoft in, in 2012's big platform move was UPDs, uh, user profile disks. These were great. It, what it did it is it it took a virtual it took a your profile, it turned it into a VHD file that could be mounted on an Azure or local server, and profiles would connect to that instead of the actual local terminal server. This increased performance as well as decreased the amount of maintenance between terminal servers. We've all had issues where we have two or three terminal servers, and every desktop is different depending on what on what server you hit. Roaming, prof, roaming profiles or redirected folders started to change some of that, but we noticed the the, the redundant the reduction of speed 
when logging in, and or performance again. User profile disks have been the forefront in the best you know, Microsoft option for several years, but some of the capabilities on that we have seen not be able to keep up with today's with today's Office 365 suite. FS Logic is an app is a virtual application that virtualizes your profile into a VHDX file that actually contains either your profile in an entirely or they can limit it just to the Office 365 container. This will house your OneDrive, your SharePoint, Teams, your Outlook PST file, in those, in those, or you can have the entire profile engulfed in this. So again, FS Logic, just that that profile container. This is a little bit of reading that you can do. So a little bit on the on the on under the hood or the technical details of it is what, the reason that UPDs we have found the issue with is that when trying to sync down your local OneDrive with a UPD or a user profile disk or a redirected folder, Microsoft or uh, OS recognizes that your profile is a symbolic limp, link or or sim link that is not an actual file location but just a redirect or marker. These applications, the ones I have talked about a few times so far, the OneDrive, Teams, and SharePoint, all look at this and will not install to those symbolic links. Some more things that UPDs lack other than this is Outlook search capabilities in, in our remote desktop environment. And what a little bit overview is what that is, is that when you hit your start button in the lower left hand corner and start typing, that's called Windows search. That's actually not available when you use user profile disks. FS logic, while well, either using the entire virtual profile or the Office 365 container, allows you to re-add that search fit feature and give it that more single client workstation or your laptop feel, even though you are in that remote desktop environment. Another thing that we have seen is corrupt profiles and lagging profiles as far as time to load. By switching over from VHD to VHDX, Microsoft has really, with FS Logic, improved that speed and reliability, and we've seen the consistency dramatically improve. With wait times, with FS Logic, the reason that it can it can work very well and that we've seen it work well is that by mounting the VHDX, it actually bypasses all that bandwidth or throughput or, or I/O processes between the storage server where you're housing the the profile in the actual client workstation. Because of it being mounted, it doesn't have to pass that information from one side to the other. This is this is such a remarkable. Uh, feat that we really enjoy because it gives you that local login on a newer computer that it's you, you you type in your credentials you go and you can authenticate in that in that normal three to five seconds versus up to two minutes with with some of our virtual desktop environments with with fs logic this is more of the Office 365 container versus the entire profile. At a, at a recent client we just implemented, we actually implemented just the Office containers. What was very nice about the Office containers is that desktop documents, um, pictures, those type of folders, app data were allowed to stay on the on the terminal servers themselves and be redirected to a file structure. And we actually just contained the Office 365 segment of theirs on the FS Logic profiles. We've seen again this work great in tandem. So what's really nice about it in, in our eyes is that FS Logic allows you to not, it doesn't have to be a, a single solution. It can be, but it allows you to configure it to your environment instead of having either all or nothing.
applications use the profile as if it were on a local drive because FS Logic Solutions uses the filter driver to redirect the profile, applications don't recognize that the profile is on the network. It obscures redirection importance because many applications will not work properly on a virtualized storage. So we have seen very we have seen several applications, and not one application so far have we seen conflict with FS Logic. There's always time, there's always differences, but for us, what we have seen is great results through this product. One of the best parts about this product is that most everyone listening and you at home will all have the ability to implement this in your environment for virtually free. All of these licenses are included now with Microsoft. So it's really one of those things that they're pushing it very hard in, in out there to, to implement this technology if you have the use for it. It does create a better, fuller, more functional uh, experience with the Office 365 suite. And so they have really, really, really made it to where if as long as you're running a remote access with a Cal license or you have Windows PCs, you are going to have a good chance of this being included in your license. Now, what, what OSs does it support? So anything from Windows 7, which now just continued through Windows 10, the current build, Server 2008R2, which just went out of support all the way through the current build, both 32 and 64-bit applications when, when needed. In no instance of the FS Logic Suite support an environment that is not supported by Microsoft original equipment. We always throw that in there to say, yes, they will always help us, but if there is, if you are in that Server 2008R2 or Windows 7 where the support has ended, it does, it does hurt that a little bit. So at this time, I wanna see if there are any questions. Thank you, Taylor. Yes, uh, we do have a question that came through. Is there any benefit in using FS Logic in our environment if we do not currently use OneDrive? Yeah, that's a great question. If you're using an if your environment has remote desktop and you it is up across multiple servers where we're not just on one, I see a, a great a great benefit towards it just by the profile speed, the profile consistency, and the load times, application connectivity and consistency. It's a great solution that you can implement again that most for most people at no cost that will only benefit the environment that you are in and improve on it. And in, an, in the IT world, that scalability is so important. It allows you to set yourself up in the future to have that uh, to have more ability and to ha introduce the Office 365 suite inside of your environment. So I would say yes, it, 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 it does absolutely benefit people if you're not quite on the Office 365 suite or you're not syncing down OneDrive for business currently. Um, it, it, it is. It could be still a great benefit for the mobility of the profiles within the local environment, both hybrid, cloud-based, and standalone or on-prem. Okay, thank you, Taylor. I believe Absolutely. that was the only question that we had for you today. If anybody has any further questions or you would like to talk to Taylor more about um, a question that you have, feel free to uh, get his contact information. He has that up on the screen right now. Or you can give us a call um, or your account manager. All right, well, we thank you again for joining us today. And if you're watching on demand, we thank you. And thank you, Taylor, again for presenting. And just to let you know, we do have more webinars coming soon. Next week, we have two control one of our ISV partners, and they're going to be presenting on strengthen your internal control with security apps from Two Control, and that one is on Tuesday next week. And then next Wednesday, we have another one of our ISV partners, Generics Group, and they are going to be presenting on new implementation methodologies for a remote world. So check out our website for more of our upcoming events, and that's anovia.com events. And if you have not heard 
already, uh, Novia has a podcast that is going on. It's called the Novia Conversation. And we just want to encourage you to listen to our selection that Steve Waltz and Jeff Pergolsky have provided to us. And you can find out about all the different podcast platforms to listen to on our podcast page. And that's novia.com slash podcast. So check out our selection and subscribe so you'll be notified when those new episodes air. And it is getting to be fall, which means conference time. And Anovia is proud to be a premier sponsor of a new conference that's called Dynamics Con. And that's going to take place virtually on September 9th and 10th. And we are also a premier sponsor for Community Summit, which is a virtual event as well, taking place October 7th through the 9th. And you can find out about all of the details for these two conferences on our conference page, and that's anovia.com slash conferences. So check those details out and get more information on how you can save on your summit registration. All right, well, we thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you soon on another Anovia webinar. Have a great weekend, everyone.